Hello, golfers. Welcome back to JD Golf TV, your home for excellence in golf. Today, we're going to talk about something very, very serious and important. Why aren't you improving? So let's get after it. Okay, you want to be better at golf. Now, folks, if you don't practice, wrong channel. Go somewhere else, get one of those hot tips right that uh, works for approximately three seconds no here we're here at this place jd golf tv to get better at this game we have the ability to practice and train a little bit and take our stuff out to the golf course so it's going to take i'm sorry there's no magic bullet that i can throw at you or shoot at you so what do we have to do to play golf well let's say that you just want to break 90. Folks, get that damn thing in play off the tee. Number one, in my opinion, if you can't drive, you can't play. And if you're not getting the ball in play off the tee, is the game any fun anyway? Nope. So let's get the drive in play. How do you do that? Go back and check out that making sense of the nonsense video. You've got to get your drive. I don't even care at first, folks. I don't even care if you're hitting a five wood off the tee, a three wood off the tee. Hybrid, doesn't matter. Get it in place so we can start the dang hole. Way back in the day when we had the brassy and the niblick and the mashy and the spoon, the driver was called the play club. And old Dunnigan's take on the play club is get the damn thing in place so we can start the hole. So number one, we got to eliminate the penalty strokes off the tee as much as humanly possible. Now, one of the things that you should do to help you with that is just learn to create the shot cone between the ball goes straight or curves to the left, or the ball goes straight or curves to the right. When you're standing on the tee box, ask Rory McIlroy about this right now, Jordan Spieth in the past, and yet you don't know which way that ball's gonna curve off the tee, Golf is very, very hard. So work on your face to path relationship as well as your centeredness of hit. So number one, get it in play. Now wait, there's more. If you want to start coming close to 80 and breaking 80, now you've got to hit that damn drive far enough to reach greens and regulation. So greens and regulation comes next. The more greens you hit at a certain level, the lower you score. That is a stone cold promise. So we can get it in play. We can get it near or on the green of regulation. We can start to really do some damage to these golf courses. So part of the driving is, is it far enough to reach greens? And we have a saying, I think I got this from Mr. Rich Hunt, who's a statistician for golf, a uh, complete golf geek, not unlike myself. And Rich calls the danger zone. For normal golfers, I'm going to call it between 150 and 200 yards. For more highly skilled golfers, 175 to 225. Uh, maybe for junior golfers, it might be something like 130. Let's put it this way. Seven iron and longer, that's the danger zone. If you have a ton of danger zone shots during your rounds of golf, we might want to look at hitting the ball farther because, well, it's danger zone for a uh, good reason. We need to get that ball just around the green, folks. These are hard shots. When you're hitting a four iron into a green and you do hit a green, you'll see the pros on TV, big smiley faces. When they stuff a nine iron, they're like, eh, that's what I do. But stuff a four iron, big smiley face. Okay, drive, one, two, greens regulation, especially with eight iron down to your wedges. Number three, get those wedges on the green all of the time. Folks, this business of fatting a wedge when you're 60 yards from the green, sculling it over the green when you're 30 yards from the green, you know what I'm talking about. Laying sod over it, that means hitting a ball so fat that you hit the ground, the divot flops over the golf ball. Yes, I've seen it in golf lessons. It's awesome. It's a trick shot and it's worth, I wish I would actually film all of my golf lessons. We've got to get a wedge to have solid contact and some sort of distance control. Please see the 
a why is the wedge so difficult video. That'll help you. So if we can get our wedge on the green, wait a minute, now we've got a drive and play, an approach shot on or near the green, a wedge that's on the green all the time, and then folks, two putt every green. You know you're gonna make you one or two putts, you just broke 90 for sure. Get out there, hit me nine greens of regulation during that time, guess what? Now you just broke 80. If and only if you don't putt like uh, someone who doesn't know how to putt. That means when you are putting, actually and chipping, if you can get your golf ball to finish within 10% of your distance from 30 yards all the way to putting, the distance putts, you're doing really, 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 really well. That takes technique, yes, and it takes work, yes, and it takes knowing where to land these chippies, maybe how far to swing, maybe how much force, how to make super solid contact, putting it, size of the stroke, force of the stroke. If you can get those skills up and then start to get dirty from three to eight feet, meaning uh, means you make some putts from that range. If we, can, if we can get the chips, distance putts, inside of 10%, we're good. Now, if you hit that 45 foot putt to four feet and blow the putt, it's not because the 45 footer didn't get close enough. It's because you need more skill at your putting, short putts. So I would practice some distance putting. Get a feel for it, rule of 10%. I would practice as much as time allows reading the putt, picking your line, and hitting it the right speed. Those are the three skills of putting. When you guys practice putting, I see it all the time. <laughs> it's actually crazy. The hard thing about putting is not hitting the ball on your line. And that skill can be practiced at home. So that when you get to the golf course, you know, you know I've earned the right to say, I know that I can hit my line with my putts. But then when we practice putting, you know what you do. You take three balls out there, Whap, whap, whap. You miss one, you make an adjustment, you miss the other one, and you make another adjustment, and you missed all three putts. But you haven't assembled all the skills, speed, line, and read, that are required to putt. So you're not learning how to putt. You're learning how to ruin your stroke by adjusting where the ball went in uh, reverse order, meaning you're not trying to hit a ball there. You're hitting it, looking at it, going, hmm, nope, nope, no good, hit it over there. Oop, no good, hit it over there. That's not, that's learning in reverse, right? You're, you're requiring to make a mistake before you learn. And that's really what we do. In golf, whether you are driving, ironing, that's what we call it, approach shots, wedging, putting, whatever you're doing, it's got to be the idea that, okay, if I do this, with my golf club. Am I gonna be okay? Then you go try that. Now you gotta go back in your laboratory, back it up, go wait, 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 okay, that didn't quite work. Let me try this with my golf club, all right? And you get in there and try it. And guess what happens? You learn. So this little pre-shot routine, we call it in golf, I hate to say it, I call it pre-shot process. I will run the process when we're hitting golf ball like a pro process. Okay, hmm. All right, I think, I think that's enough size to get that putt right to the hole like that. Okay, I, I got that, all right, yep. All right, let me try this out. And you putt it and you observe, and you observe as a impartial observer, not as the judge, because the judge is killing you. You're supposed to just be learning. Had a great discussion today with a student. Wait, wait time out, time out. Whoa, 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 it's a lesson, right? We're preparing to do battle right now because it, it is golf season here. Well, kind of. It was like 30 today. When we're preparing, we're getting very, very, very curious. Practice is curious, right, about what's going on, making our adjustments, learning on the fly. Don't put performance on that right now. Not yet. Prepare all the shots you need to play a round of golf. Doesn't that sound so sensible? But we don't. So I have to be honest with you. 
I went to play golf with my wonderful daughter, who is, uh, just so you know, let's be fair, she is the greatest kid in the world. It's a fact. I think it's well documented. We went to play golf. I have been practicing here in the garage studio all winter. I've done uh, partial wedges a bunch, some driving, but normally I drive the ball really, really well, so I don't really worry too much about driving, and lots of full swing irons. And then I get out to the golf course and the wind is howling. And I'm standing up at this golf shot and I go, <laughs> I have not prepared this shot. Screamer trying to hit, trying to flight it under the wind. It is screaming out there. And uh, I got one of those really right. I absolutely just hit the most beautiful golf shot. I was like, whoa. And I had the exact same shot several holes later. And guess what? Did not pull it off. I hit it 20 yards left with an approach shot into a bunker. I uh, might have made double for that one. And, and I'm kind of laughing to myself. I'm like, oh, man, I have not been preparing for battle very well. I've been practicing a lot. There's a difference. Practice, not the game, not the game. Prepare for battle and then play the game. Those are the three steps there. And... Play is the game, the game I love. Folks, I have practiced, but then I didn't prepare the shots I need for a round of golf. And as Ben Hogan said, there's not enough time in the day to practice all the shots you need for a round of golf. So I've got to adjust my practice now. I can hit the ball very solidly. I do that almost every single time. I'm, I'm a pro, for God's sakes. I've been playing golf forever. I don't control the ball flight all the time. Path is usually quite good. Club face gets a little wonky. But it, my problems are, are heightened by shots I'm not quite comfortable hitting because I haven't prepped them. Yes, I know how to hit them, but I still, I, though I know how to hit them, it doesn't mean I've quite got the feel, right? So I've got to practice all that stuff. So why are we not getting better? We're not practicing right. We're practicing our full swing only. Then I go out on the golf course and I'm like, oh my gosh, how many full swing irons did I hit? One. Oh my goodness. I think I hit one real full swing. It was windy as could be outside. So think about that. I've got to be hitting these low trajectory shots to get out of this wind. And I have not prepared them at all. How am I doing? Get it? I'm so busy working on my full swing, looking at the video, taking golf lessons, trying to get the club here. At least I'm not trying to get body parts here, right? At least I'm trying to do something with my golf club. And if I want to move better, I cue it with some external, not body part focus. You know, I try to get my club more around me back here, and that makes me turn more, that sort of stuff. But, but that's practice. That's only kind of step one. We got to move from that as golf season gets here to preparing the shots you're going to need. Now, that's going to say, folks, I'm telling you right now, if you're not getting the driver in play, I want you to go get me a new driver. <laughs> go get fit for the damn thing. Make sure that it works for you. Then I want you to work on centeredness of hit. Get you your little yellow can of spray paint. That's foot powder, by the way, not spray paint. I did have a student do that by accident one time. It's pretty funny. Spray up the face. Learn to hit very close to the middle, if not the middle. Learn to get the club face to club path difference by calibrating your feel for the club face. Oh, my God. To do that, you got to stop folks on hitting the stupid ball and start folks on using the golf club. Calibrate your solid contact with your irons, getting the club to bottom out with a variety of irons, not just one damn seven iron, right? Part of the challenge here is that you have all these 14 different length golf clubs. Okay, some of us only have 12, but that's okay too. You got you to gotta attune yourself to the tool, right? We got to make the tool part of you. There are more videos to help you with that. Then you got to start thinking about hitting those shots with wedges, par fives, you've got to own the par fives. This bogey in par fives is no bueno at all. we got to own the par fives, folks. Then 
prepping up those chips. If I see another one of my students throw the ball down in the rough and then fluff it up, I'm going to cut somebody's hair off. That's what I'm going to do because that drives me crazy because guess what? I said it this weekend. Um, hmm. Hmm. What's hard about chipping? Making super solid contact off all the lies you get. Huh. And you keep giving yourself the exact same perfect lie. Hmm. How are we doing? How's your preparation for battle? It's zero F for today's class. Folks, <laughs> prepare. You got, don't just throw them into miserable lies every time. Just drop them and let them go wherever they go and you hit them from there, please. A great game to play is the up and down game, 21. Play nine holes around the green. Chip it up, try to put it in. If you shoot 21, guess what? Stay off of YouTube, you got it. Sand shots, if you suck at sand shots, get a lesson or view the sand lesson because sand shots are actually really, really easy. Only shot in golf where you don't have to hit it solid to play a great shot. Whatever you're having trouble with, you can't just practice that. Although I wish all of my students would practice with the driver, the wedges, and the putter. You can pretty much skip everything else. If you get good with those clubs right there, you're going to be a force in golf. If you need extra time on the driver, take it, but don't ignore the other parts of the game, right? You got to prepare those babies for battle as well. Now, the other thing is some of you, and the last thing I know, you, everybody who knows me, all the golf pros in America that know me, know don't get this man started talking. But since it's my TV show, the other thing is, folks, no more trying to not miss. Nope. I yelled at a dad. He said, the miss is here. And I go, time out, dad. Time. What? We are not here to miss golf shots. Now, we might have to adjust the target, move it over to the left more because the water's right. I had that shot the other day, and I did chicken out, but guess what? I made a par. I hit it about 30 feet left of the flag. Water right up. Pin all the way to the right. No, you don't fade the ball at that pin, folks. Maybe if you're uh, Tiger Woods, you do, but even Tiger Woods wouldn't do that. Tiger Woods, uh, when he was the greatest, that man hardly ever missed on the wrong side of the hole. Hardly ever. It was amazing. But I digress. And I forgot what I was saying, so there. Okay, we're not playing to avoid missing. That is, you just took all the fun out of the game. Let's go out there and try to hit aggressive, though not nuclear violent, shots at smart targets. Let's go for the fun of playing golf. This business of getting on a golf course, it's a game. And being scared to death, <clears throat> folks, there is real poop going on in the world. If we're going to stand on a tee box afraid of what people will think of me if I hit the ball poorly, oh, wait, that person judging you sucks at golf, too. Don't worry about it. Go out there and give it the business, as we call it. Give it hell. And then use your round of golf to go, oh, I need to alter my practice program slightly to help me with this. I need to spend a little more time on the driver or the wedge or whatnot. The path to better golf is terribly simple, but it takes discipline. It's not one of those things. And I say this to my lessons all the time. Folks, you're not going to learn anything during this lesson. you got to be kidding me. If you perform well during a golf lesson with me, it doesn't mean a damn thing to me. You're going to learn by what you teach yourself when you're away from me. So you got to do your job really, really well. Don't necessarily give up on something because you can't do it immediately. You couldn't ride a bike immediately. Do you remember that? Right? Some of you couldn't take the damn training wheels off that bike till you were 16 years old because you were so afraid of falling. Not the right idea. Not get the training wheels off. Go out. Work on your golf skills. Number one, forget about all the body part stuff. It's dangerous. Get your hands on the golf club in a nice way. Right? Functional way. Not necessarily comfortable way. Learn to work the club face out. Learn to work the path a bit. Path is way easier than club face, by the way. Learn to hit the ball solid off every kind of lie. If you keep 
Do you remember when Charles Barkley was having a golf lesson with uh, Hank Haney? They had all the golf balls. There must have been a thousand balls lined up, and they were teed up this high. Does that look like golf? Nope. Is that going to transfer to a golf course? Hell no. <laughs> no chance, because it's totally not like it. Make your practice a little bit more like golf. Play against your buddies, right? Play putting games against your buddies. If you got, if you're um, a junior, right? Get your friends out there and try to kill each other with your golf club. Wait, that came out wrong. <laughs> if you're an adult like me, I've got a 16 year old, and we go play against each other, death matches all the time. It's 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 a fun, you know. I don't really care about the winning as much as I care about the competition. What? Right? Think about it. Think about what you're trying to get out of the game. One, I want to just enjoy being with my kid because I love the poop out of that kid. But the other one is I want to push you to get better as well. So remember that. Remember that. Folks, it's a game. We play games for fun. Stop being threatened by a stupid game. There's real crap going on in the world. All right. New attitude on improving. Go get after it.